Auzubillahi Ladies and gentlemen, I am Wasif Nakwi and I am working as a research associate with Sustainable Development Policy Institute. I welcome you to the public-private dialogue on tax and regulatory reforms for e-commerce in Pakistan. We are grateful to all of you for taking time out and making yourself available for this important meeting. Uh, the government of Pakistan has shown strong resolve to boost export across industry and other sectors. The government also wishes to help business community with trade in services, and this is where e-commerce can be leveraged. Today, we aim to facilitate through this dialogue three segments of the business community, namely local e-commerce firms, e-commerce firms who are current exporters, and potential e-commerce exporters. We are grateful to Ministry of Commerce and PRIYA for collaboration towards hosting this meeting. We particularly acknowledge the leadership and advice provided at several stages by Ms. Hussain Banoverki, Chief of Party, Pakistan Regional Economic Integration Activity, and Mr. Ahmed Fasi, Regional Trade and Policy Advisor, PRIYA. For a formal start, I now hand over the discussion to Dr. Bakar Ahmed, who's the Joint Executive Director of Sustainable Development Policy Institute. Over to you, Dr. Akar. Thank you, Wasif. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I uh, really uh, appreciate all of you uh, joining here today. Uh, I understand the start of the week and things can be very busy, uh, but I think this, this public-private dialogue uh, comes at a very appropriate time. Uh, about two days back, federal budget uh, was passed and the provincial budgets have followed uh, after that. And primarily, this is uh, a post-budget opportunity to sort of review where uh, the e-commerce sector stands uh, in terms of the regulatory and tax uh, environment and uh, how enterprises working in the digital space can be facilitated through a progressive fiscal policy. And that's the objective of, of uh, taking the stock of things immediately after uh, the budget. Uh, we also understand that if our stakeholders uh, feel uh, that, that more needs to be done, uh, we have seen an openness on part of uh, the Commerce Ministry, uh, as well as uh, the Ministry of Finance for a review of things. And the finance advisor was on record uh, to have said that uh, in this COVID environment, there will be a review of uh, the taxation measures which have been taken, and that review is expected around the end of the first quarter. So I think all in all, uh, a, a key outcome that, that one would like to sort of achieve from today's uh, public-private dialogue is to sort of uh, communicate uh, in a very timely uh, and, and implementable manner those uh, minimum set of uh, uh, interventions which our stakeholders feel today are necessary uh, for the sustainability and resilience of uh, this sector uh, in going, going forward. Uh, we do understand that there has been some uh, tax relief uh, in the budget uh, on the side of GST on goods as well as trade taxes. Provinces have come forward uh, with, with some relaxation GST in services as well. Uh, selective but it's there. Uh, and I think taking lead from that, there are three main points we wish to drive home uh, today. And these basically uh, include that the, the, the first one would be that if government's fiscal policy uh, is leading to reduction in tax compliance uh, or not uh, for e-commerce firms, for firms in the digital space. Uh, second, uh, the demand for a simpler, a, a more simpler tax regime uh, has been pending for some time. There is a large influx of startups and freelancers in the sectors, many of whom happen to participate actively in trade and services. And, uh, and, and, and we believe that uh, a more simpler uh, taxation regime would, would, would benefit them. Uh, in the past, we have seen uh, uh, good evidence coming from uh, uh, coming locally uh, as well as from uh, multilateral bodies around how a, com a complex tax regime in the sector has been acting as a barrier to growth, uh, as a barrier to entry uh, in the market. Uh, thirdly, of course, harmonization of sales tax regime uh, is desired across the Federation. Currently, all provinces have a, a, a 
a different GST regime faced by the services sectors, giving rise to multiple layers of uh, taxation, para taxes. And this, of course, is a cost to the taxpayer, but also hurts the government revenue. Uh, as varied uh, a tax regime leads to misuse, evasion, and avoidance, uh, as, as we have seen in the past. And an immediate uh, outcome of today's meeting is that we would like to communicate your suggestions to all the revenue authorities uh, across the country. Additionally, if there's going to be a supplementary finance bill around the end of the first quarter, uh, we would we, we would. Uh, of course, aim to appreciate, uh, aim to forward these suggestions to the tax policy team uh, at the MOF and FBR. Uh, we understand that colleagues from FBR have, uh, have joined us for this meeting as well. We are grateful. Uh, and and I think that's that's the kind of uh, urgency with which we just want to uh, move forward with. So with these uh, very brief uh, uh, opening remarks, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll request our uh, colleagues at Pakistan Regional uh, Economic uh, Integration Activity uh, for their uh, welcome remarks. I, I see uh, uh, our, our colleague uh, Hussein Banu Barki and Mr. Ahmed uh, Fasi uh, with us uh, here today. So if I can uh, uh, pass on to you uh, for uh, your, your opening remarks, please. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Um, uh, you know, it's, it, it gives me immense pleasure to uh, welcome you today. Uh, Priya uh, has been supporting e-commerce activity for quite some time. We had been uh, working with Ministry of Commerce to, uh, you know, put in place uh, 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 e-commerce policy framework uh, initially. Uh, and we had uh, earlier this year helped it organize uh, first consultation uh, to devise implementation strategy of all the nine pillars uh, that were identified earlier uh, in the e-commerce policy for framework and taxation and regulation was one of the important aspect of it. Um, you know, as Vakar Saab has already pointed out uh, during the consultations, uh, the outcome was that uh, stakeholders identified policy targets, key areas, and next steps with timelines uh, and the policy targets uh, included harmonization of sales tax regimes, simplification of taxation system and tax, uh, taxation facilitation for e-commerce uh, sector. We are hopeful that today's uh, discussions would, uh, you know, would help us uh, taking the discussion forward and in development of the uh, implementation strategy, in fact, with timelines. Uh, Priya, uh, briefly uh, speaking, has been uh, assisting uh, Ministry of Commerce and other government departments to adopt uh, measures which can improve business enabling environment in the country uh, by looking at laws, uh, policies, and regulations uh, uh, with the perspective to make them more inclusive, uh, transparent, uh, uh, as well as sustainable. It's very important. Uh, you know, we've we, a few months ago, we had not imagined how the uh, global trading systems uh, and the economic systems would come under stress because of uh, such a pandemic. Uh, and now governments are increasingly looking towards e-commerce to generate uh, the repressed demand, to create employment, to uh, generate growth uh, so that it can enhance it its outreach uh, not only for delivery of uh, merchandises but also uh, delivery of uh, essential goods essential items to marginalized and vulnerable and length and breadth of this country so uh, i think uh, it is uh, required that uh, uh, we are able to reform our taxation system in a manner which enhances uh, private sector's ability to uh, generate business as well as its efforts to supplement government's efforts in in providing uh, basic amenities uh, to uh, to millions of people out there who are facing this challenge so i hope uh, that this discussion uh, that we're going to have today would have fruitful outcomes. Um, I thank you all for participating. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Ahmed Saab. I really appreciate uh, your, your remarks and, of course, your support in taking this forward. Uh, I think, uh, without ado, uh, we'll request uh, uh, Ms. Aisha Mariani, who is a senior civil servant and joint secretary at the Ministry of Commerce, uh, to take forward this, this discussion. She's the focal point uh, and lead on the e commerce policy and its implementation. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this will, it will be probably appropriate to uh, allow her the time uh, at the very outset so that she can also inform us around uh, the implementation status uh, of the policy and particularly the regulatory and tax focused uh, measures uh, within uh, this uh, implementation uh, strategy. Uh, so uh, once uh, uh, Ms. Aisha Moriani has completed, we would first like to give the floor to our colleagues from the private sector. And then, of course, uh, we can come to uh, the government and the regulatory bodies who uh, joined us uh, here today. Uh, we, we, we are totally mindful of the screen time and the screen fatigue over here. So we are going to make it uh, sort of quick. In normal times, of course, we tend to meet physically, uh, but, but we do understand the compulsion of the time. So, uh, so, so, so I think that, that that's why just trying to keep the pace of things uh, moving fast. So, uh, so, so thank you very much, uh, Ms. Aisha Muriani, for joining us, and uh, uh, we, we look forward to listening to you. Please, madam. Uh, so probably she is disconnected. Uh... Sure, that's okay. So, so maybe I, I think um, I, I can move to uh, Mr. Amir Ibrahim Saab, uh, who has joined us, and. Uh, uh, Amir Saab is uh, CEO of uh, Jazz, and of course, uh, he has been contributing uh, a lot to the discourse on this subject. Uh, uh, Amir Saab, please. All right. Well, thank you for having me over here. Um, I think it's uh, it's an important topic. I'm glad to see that so many people are participating, um, uh, both in the preparation of this policy and, uh, more importantly, uh, what we're going to do with it. So, uh, I think I read the uh, big uh, policy document and then I had some observations and of course we've been in touch trying to feedback into it as it was being created. Um, I, I'll say a couple of things um, uh, before I have, you know, before we get further down into it and we talk about specific concerns. But generally speaking, first of all, it's it's a step in the right direction that people are, especially in the government, uh, realizing the importance of how e-commerce as a channel uh, can facilitate businesses. At the same time, you know, like generally with all policies or all strategies or all documents, uh, it's not really the policy paper, it's going to be the eventual uh, implementation of some of those things. And I think that's where I tend to be slightly more critical about what we have accomplished so far, uh, because uh, to practitioners and those who are already involved, um, some of these things are truisms, things that we've already known. Uh, the key questions are, how are we going to actually help it? And for that, you need a specific action plan, uh, which should perhaps follow the policy. Policy sets the general direction. But if we have something in a policy which generally says we should give Android tablets, uh, that doesn't really help anything, right? Who's going to give it? When? How will it help? Those kind of actionable items are important. Uh, and I would suggest the same kind of a thing is there for all the uh, things. I think I read in the report that we're going to do about 158 billion rupees of e-commerce business in Pakistan today. So we've gotten up to this point without a policy also. Now the question is, how do we actually use the policy framework and bring in the various people over here to accelerate it at a much faster pace? So that would be, um, I think, my overarching statement. Step in the right direction, but a little bit more needed in terms of specific actions uh, that will actually help accelerate uh, the agenda. Uh, and then I would, you know, obviously want to hear from others, but I've got a lot more comments, which I will perhaps do after my general introduction as we get deeper into what exactly is e-commerce uh, and what the roles of different parties can be in facilitating that. Thank you, Amr Sir. Uh, uh, I, I, I do see that I think Ms. Uh, uh, Aisha Muriani has joined us now and uh, I think I can uh, invite her uh, uh, probably at this point uh, not only to uh, probably address some of the very overarching uh, uh, things which Amir Saab touched upon, but also to uh, take uh, to, to, to give her own take on the subject. Uh, Madam, can you hear us? 
Ajari, I am Aisha. I am Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce. Um, so I am really thankful uh, for inviting me on this uh, meeting. And uh, it would be nice to know that who else is here sitting here. So I, I think I missed the introduction. So um, if we uh, just start with you know some of the progress that we have already made. Uh, uh, in e-commerce uh, policy, we, we have had two uh, uh, national e-commerce council meetings. Uh, first one was held in January and the second one was held on 18th June. Um, and um, we uh, discussed the whole implementation plan in the second NECC. Um, and um, as uh, you have focused in this uh, roundtable meeting on the taxation issue, which is pillar four, uh, of the policy. Um, so uh, we had a very detailed discussion with the provincial revenue authorities. Um, almost every prov uh, provincial um, PRA was there. And uh, a lot of initiatives are coming from the provinces actually. Uh, at, here FBR is still, I think, very busy with the budget and they have uh, uh you know issues to deal with imf while provinces um are i think more uh, proactively looking at uh, the policies to attract uh, you know it companies and it enabled services so um kp i think is uh, one of the first ones who reduced uh, gst and they have brought down um, to five percent three percent and now they are uh, going for two percent and uh, Punjab has also now brought it down to 5%. Um, and uh, there are few other initiatives, for example, if payments are made in restaurants and uh, uh, and I think on, in beauty parlors, the uh, sales tax is, is reduced uh, um, to around 5% or you know, 7 or 12. But if it's not a digital payment, then the full 16% is applied. So these are some of the, I think, developments uh, which are positive. But uh, if we look at the whole thing, I think there are layers of taxation which we need to look at. Um, income tax is just one, that how do we deal with the uh, income tax of the companies uh, that are involved in e-commerce? Uh, then um, obviously uh, GST on services and then GST on goods. Uh, if, if, for example, products is sold through an online platform, then uh, you know GST on goods can also be reduced. So these are some of the incentives which uh, can help to promote. And then uh, um, taxation on digital payment itself, uh, the whole chain which is involved in the digital payments, uh, we we have uh, come up with the idea of uh, having an exclusive uh, working group that will be looking uh, on this dimension that how can we promote digital payments and uh, um, looking at all the dimensions that why this is not becoming uh, why is cash remains still a preferred option and uh, why digital payments are not picking up the way they should because uh, especially under these circumstances um all government uh, institutions are trying to promote it uh, but uh, on the other hand we also have to see whether uh, consumer uh, confidence uh, level is increasing for example escrow payment services are still not available uh, which is one of the reason why digital payments are not uh, becoming so popular so taxation is one issue then it is interlinked uh, with many other um, aspects uh, of e-commerce. So um, I would welcome to listen uh, from others also. Uh, we at, in the Ministry of Commerce, we are trying our best to push all nine pillars and um, we, we re recognize the importance of greater collaboration among government departments. Um, so in um, FBR, they have come up with one uh, policy unit for the harmonization of the taxes. And similarly, in the Ministry of Commerce, we are trying to develop a portal where uh, we will we would be able to connect all relevant government departments with the e-commerce entrepreneur 
uh, to provide them relevant information uh, about the regulations or, or any um, new uh, you know facilitation and then uh, they would be able to um, raise any queries and get responses so i i would uh, like others to you know respond thank you very much uh, uh, madam i really appreciate your inputs over here and i think uh, your 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 point around uh, fbr taking a lead on a tax harmonization is certainly uh, very welcome i think that is what uh, the industry players have been uh, talking about and we do understand that at the time when the e-commerce uh, policy was approved another welcome development was the approval of uh, the national tax council which is mandated to do exactly the task which uh, you, you, you've informed us now some of our colleagues may have uh, their questions for you at a later stage uh, so we'd really appreciate if you uh, stay on uh, with us so as per the format uh, i had explained before you joined that we are first allowing the chance to our colleagues from the private sector and then probably we can uh, come back uh, to uh, the, the, the various organizations who have joined us from uh, the, 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 the public sector. So keeping uh, the same format in view, if I can uh, invite uh, uh, up next is Mr. Mr. Asfandiar Farooq, who's the Managing Director of Hub. Uh, Asfandiar sir, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Uh, yes, please. Uh, so, uh, briefly introduce myself. I'm actually uh, from the private sector and uh, operating a retail and e-commerce uh, organization. Uh, as well as uh, uh, office bearer at the Chain Store Association of Pakistan, which is a the representative trade body uh, for organized retail uh, within Pakistan. Uh, so quite a bit of, as, as we, uh, I think everybody would be aware that retail and e-commerce are uh, one very closely interlinked uh, with the offline sales channels and the online sales channels. So uh, especially now with the uh, current circumstances, I think, uh, 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 the topic here uh, uh, being taxation, I think this is a, a, a very important topic. And of course, as Ms. Aisha also mentioned, that this is the uh, um, integral part of the e-commerce policy. And just to, I just like to clarify one thing: as being a, also a, a member of the National E-Commerce Council, um, we recently had the meeting uh, uh, on the 18th of June, the second uh, council meeting. And uh, before that, the uh, uh, and as well as the before that, the implementation action plan uh, was shared with all the uh, participants, uh, be it private, public, private sector and public sector. And that lays out a quite detailed sort of um, matrix of pillar-wise uh, key policy initiatives, key areas, um, and uh, timelines and responsibilities as to within each pillar of the e-commerce uh, policy, which have been taken uh, forward with the uh, collaboration of the public sector and the private sector uh, at the moment. As far as taxation is concerned, just to give my uh, brief points on this, uh, I would not want to take too much time. Uh, is yes, I, I think uh, I would echo Ms. Aisha's point and also others. Uh, I'm sure within the industry uh, that we, uh, from a taxation standpoint, harmonization is very important because we do have varying tax rates and varying uh, uh, sort of uh, approaches towards taxation in the provinces and e-commerce. Uh, other than the uh, goods side, the services side is all uh, our provincial matters. And that's where we need, uh, uh, we have varying rates on varying services, e-commerce services, ride hailing services. Um, and also uh, that I think is one thing that is a critical issue uh, uh, in, uh, in my opinion, uh, that they need to be low, uh, predict predictable as well, because in our uh, uh, current situation, every year we have uh, tax, tax rates that change uh, are brought down drastically, taken up and so on. So this. A continuous consistency of policy and a roadmap that is a national roadmap and with the provinces, uh, provincial governments on board to be able to give that kind of roadmap to the businesses involved that, you know, this will be the rate or this will be the progression of the rate, rates or taxation rates over the course of, say, five years, 10 years and so on. We need longer plans uh, across the board. But of course, taxation is also critical because in order to for business planning, it's very critical to know. Uh, the impact that will have on the consumer as well as on the b2b side and the b2c side uh, uh, as far as taxation is concerned as well as uh, um, on the goods side we uh, i uh, i come to that later actually service to complete the services aspect i think as the punjab uh, finance bill in, uh, that's been i think approved by the uh, punjab assembly a very critical uh, uh, sort of uh, measure was has been approved which is 
the much lower uh, tax rate on services uh, for uh, digital payments. This is on for the offline sales channel, particularly because it's for services, restaurants and uh, salon, uh, big parlors and so on, so on. I think 6%, uh, if I'm not wrong, is the services rate for them. And 17 or 16 percent is the standard rate for cash transactions. So something like this needs to be implemented across the board, across the country, rather than it being done in one province and not in the others. And of course, on a national level, uh, this needs to be driven. So to encourage online purchasing through digital uh, payment channels, as well as on offline uh, uh, aspects. So I just I just want to like leave it there. Just my, these are my key points uh, regarding that. On the goods side, just sorry, just one one thing. I think goods. Similarly, the sale of goods and the, the tax tax rates on goods being sold through uh, online sales channels and preferably on digit through digital means should also be incentivized through taxation because that's a very big um, sort of a disincentive for um, customers, of course, and it's, it creates a very uneven playing field when we have cash transactions going on in parallel while the digital transactions are not necessarily because of the cost of digital payments, but because of the uh, the taxation rates on the good on the sale of goods, which is actually a big impediment when we look at the rates at the moment, 70% or 12% or 14%, depending on the, the situation. But this is also a huge gap and which, which actually encourages cash on delivery and cash transactions. So I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Aspandiyar, sir. I, I think some very important points. and. Your 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 point around the certainty of the tax code throughout the year is is is, is most important. We do understand that uh, COVID has presented an opportunity uh, to, to 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 several of the firms in this sector. However, many of them have been informing us that it's difficult. It's been difficult to forecast and project uh, their cash flows uh, given the uncertainty around the tax code and the fact that the tax code may change. Uh, in the middle of the year, so that 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 is certainly uh, an, an observation which is well taken. Uh, if I can uh, request, uh, uh, if I can move on now to Ali Amar Saab. Uh, Ali Saab is is uh, CEO of BlueX. Uh, Ali Saab, please. Um, hi. A uh, couple of really good points have been mentioned. I, I think I agree with uh, the first comment that we really need action items to take to start now. Uh, especially in the homogenizing of uh, the tax regime across uh, the provinces. Uh, there are a lot of pockets um, which result in people wanting to cheat taxes on e-commerce, especially the uh, competition between people who have not, who aren't paying taxes, who are able to sell cheaper. If we can prevent that from happening, I think it will be a big move towards um, standardizing the industry itself certainly th 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 thank you Elisa. Uh, I, I i think this is this is what a lot of freelancers in this space are also uh, asking for so really uh, appreciate uh, this point over here uh, uh, zishan shahid saab is uh, next uh, on my list he is a ceo of uh, thai pakistan zishan sir ji assalam alaikum uh, thank you vakar saab uh, Many of my colleagues have already mentioned some very important points. So I would probably look into, you know, and, and uh, some different points and I'll probably present some different suggestions and I'll have a couple of questions from uh, public sector representatives here as well. So maybe they can they can answer them, uh, you know, when when it's when floor is with them. So one of the very important points that's already been mentioned is uh, about the cash on delivery, right? So majority of the uh, E-commerce in Pakistan is being done on cash on delivery, uh, which is not helping the process. And as Madam Aisha mentioned, as, as well, escrow service becomes very important as well. And along with that, uh, I think a complaint addressal system is also very important. Because one of the major reasons that uh, e-commerce is not picking up in Pakistan is because of the lack of trust and uh, between buyer and seller, right? So along with an escrow service, a proper complaint addressal system monitored by the government uh, would would go a long way in helping the e-commerce situation. Uh, harmonization of taxes we've already talked about, but I think another uh, uh, another thing, another suggestion would be that the government should also encourage shared warehousing uh, for e-commerce uh, to thrive because uh, warehousing or storage is one of the problems that, that startups face. Also, I think, uh, Recently, during this uh, pandemic and during this lockdown, uh, the government uh, 
you know, missed a very important opportunity in terms of uh, promoting e-commerce. Uh, if, if tax breaks or tax incentives would have been uh, could have been uh, you know announced for selling online, uh, then uh, you know most of the most of your retailers would probably shift to uh, the the online selling system, and you know they will also then uh, register with FBR as well. Those who were not registered. So this, I think, is maybe never too late. Maybe this could also be, uh, you know, looked into that. Also, one of the one of the important points, uh, if we have someone from FPR over here, uh, and I believe FPR, as Madam Aisha mentioned as well, is already working on harmonization of taxes and you know tax policy for for startups. We don't know uh, yet. Maybe we would know in a bit when someone from FPR would speak about that. Uh, what is the progress on that? But one thing that we need to keep in mind is that we need to be very we, the, this this harmonization of taxes this policy has to be a very long term uh, if i speak from the point of view of startups because startups uh, you know they, they work you know they, they thrive on their valuation and you know when they're going to investors uh, uh, investors are looking into their valuations as well and the valuations are based on three four five years ten years projections right and the projections are based on uh, the sales and the cost of sales and all that, right? So if we if we would then change it very frequently, uh, then it could derail the uh, you know uh, startup ecosystem process. So yeah, I think these are a few of the suggestions uh, that I had, and you know I would like to hear from uh, public sector representatives as as well on this. Thank you. Thank you indeed, uh, Zishan sir. This is uh, most appreciated. I think uh, your, your, your points around uh, the need for escrow service, shared warehousing, and uh, uh, perhaps incentivizing the conventional retailers as well to come online. Uh, I, I, I think this is very important and something which can be picked up uh, uh, in case there is a supplementary uh, finance bill. Uh, uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll uh, now move to Mr. Parvez Iftikhar sir. Uh, Parvez sir, uh, uh, is, is a very noted practitioner uh, in, in the digital space. He's also currently member of uh, Prime Minister's task force uh, on uh, IT. Uh, Pervez Saab, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bakar. Um, yes, e-commerce policy, first of all, I must congratulate. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, step forward, uh, even if it is a year or two later than our neighbors. Uh, but uh, uh, it is it is extremely uh, extremely uh, wise to have a policy because so far we uh, have been doing without one. Still, there has been some e-commerce uh, development in the country, which is also very positive. I only hope that uh, the um, implementation of the policy will be will be carried out uh, in true letter and spirit. Uh, we also had a telecom policy, for example, five years ago. Uh, but we fail to see much um, implementation of that. Uh, in fact, hardly anything has been implemented as far as telecom policy is concerned. And telecom pol telecom is happens to be one of the pillars of e-commerce. So, and uh, we have uh, been hearing about taxation and, and on different uh, aspects of e-commerce. Telecommunications is is one. Uh, for example, uh, there is a 12.5% tax, uh, withholding tax on the use of internet. Now, one doesn't understand uh, why we have a tax on use, because normally in the past we used to have use tax on cigarettes, uh, which made sense, of course, because you wanted to, people to not to smoke. But uh, in this case, we have uh, use tax on internet. Uh, withholding tax is uh, something which cannot be reclaimed by people who are not not taxpayers they're below the limit uh, so it is unfair uh, in, in that respect uh, the uh, also one thing has been mentioned the consistency and the predictability of the taxation regime absolutely um, we miss that very badly uh, taxes go up and down uh, like a yo-yo every year in fact during during the year and uh, which of course especially for the startups i fully agree are very damaging even for a, for established large conglomerates, I think it's very damaging. And uh, uh, we have other charges uh, slapped on uh, telecommunications, which impacts e-commerce, of course, in the end. Uh, taxes, uh, um, charges like right of way and uh, very expensive uh, rates for the spectrum and things like that. 
so all these uh, taxes and charges and 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 levies and, and they actually contribute towards uh, suppressing uh, not just e-commerce but all kinds of uh, uh, modern digitalization um, uh, initiatives that that we can take and or we should take um, i think we have to look at it uh, look at the digitalization part somehow somebody very at the very top has to look at it uh, holistically and address these uh, big um, roadblocks big hindrances that we have um, for example there is a dispute on the renewal of uh, mobile licenses it has been there in the courts for one year now 13 months to be exact uh, nobody is looking at it uh, trying to resolve it somehow uh, unless we have a proper functioning uh, affordable ubiquitous telecommunication system which is one of the pillars i think it is not just a pillar it's a foundation of e-commerce uh, e-commerce will never be able to flourish the way it should so i'll stop at that thank you Parvez, sir. and and uh, i think this is something which uh, in our past interaction with the commerce ministry was also discussed that uh, uh, probably the taxation should be in line with uh, your economies. In fact, they have uh, been doing a good job in terms of incentivizing digitization. And uh, I think one of the suggestions which could go is that this request could be taken uh, taken up by the subcommittee uh, uh, in the e-commerce uh, council. Uh, but I think on, uh, on, on rates of spectrum as well as the related point on taxes and rules of internet, uh, Amir Ibrahim uh, Saab has also uh, been, been, been talking about this, so maybe if I can uh, quickly bring him back into this discussion on this very point, you know, uh, in case he would have uh, in, in, in any further inputs, because uh, he's, he's been record, he's been on record talking about this subject very passionately. Amir sir, please. So listen, we are already addressing uh, most of the issues related to telecom at uh, all the right levels, uh, but since I wanted to focus more on e-commerce. Uh, I think there are certain type of taxes. I wouldn't go into spectrum and all those things, uh, which are generally uh, quite broad. Uh, but there are users check taxes, especially on data, uh, which inhibit the growth of broadband. And I think we have to recognize what are the pillars of e-commerce. The pillars of e-commerce require somebody to actually be on e. What does that e mean? Having connectivity, right? So we have to increase connectivity, which the telecom companies are doing through implementing more 4G, whether they pay more or less for spectrum, that's the broader issue. But when the customer has to use, and as Pervez already mentioned, they're paying about 12 and a half percent withholding tax that they can't even recover. So somebody coming from that particular forum is going to find it more prohibitive to use a smartphone to buy electronic goods. We have already started penalizing the customer for usage. The access becomes a barrier. These are the inhibitors. So while, uh, uh, okay, so that's one component of it. Then the general sales tax and the harmonization, many other people have talked about it. We also within the telecom sector uh, face a big uh, challenge because the reconciliation of those taxation consumes a lot of time. So the harmonization of taxes, GSTs are going to be extremely important. And I did not know the level of detail that I think uh, Iswandiyar was talking about in terms of how it varies from goods and services and provinces to provinces. But we have to recognize that if we want to improve e-commerce, we have to make it super simple. We have to make the transaction cheaper than it would have been otherwise on cash. And one of the overarching ambitions for greater e-commerce is greater documentation. Both of your retailers, your sellers, and your consumers. Now, to be able to do that, you have to reduce the entry barriers. You have to make it agile. You have to make it. You have to make the experience easier for both the customer and the seller. Um, since I have uh, you over here and I recognize there are a number of uh, other participants and I don't know when I get into the flow again, I just wanted to highlight one or two things also that while I do appreciate this is a good policy, it's overarching, but at times I feel that we're perhaps trying to boil the ocean. We're talking about not only the three fundamentals of e-commerce, which is having a marketplace, effective logistics, uh, and a payment system, we're also talking about uh, customer uh, protection. We're talking about registration. Now, those things should have happened in any case. We should have uh, strong, robust laws for consumer protection. It's not that you go into an e-channel that you're going to talk about that. Registration of um, vendors, we should be doing that in any event. 
E only allows us to do things more efficiently. So, uh, you know, one of the uh, things that I noticed was that while I do appreciate that when we work with government, we have to take a number of stakeholders, but when you take many more stakeholders, then you in a way start boiling the ocean because our experience has been, and I work quite closely with government, even on single point agenda, uh, making progress takes a long time. So when you have different ministries, different provinces, you have FPR, you have NADRA, you have PTA, you have State Bank, all those people coming in, uh, and I don't want to be needlessly cynical, but the probability of moving the needle becomes very difficult. You have to have a really strong project management office, and somebody has to have the mandate that we will make it happen. And that happens with very specific action points, which are smart, and they're specific, and they're time-bound, and they're actionable. Now, unless we bring in those things, it will just be a wish list. And we, we need to move away from the wish lists to making things happen. Uh, those were some of the things that I wanted to capture. Like I said, I don't want to uh, be a party pooper and say, well, nothing good has been done. It's been very informative. But as I said earlier on also, we have done about 160 billion rupees of uh, uh, e-commerce sales with or without a policy. Uh, if we can just focus on getting rid of the barriers, and we started talking about those barriers like uh, taxation, uh, if we can facilitate broadband penetration, if we can, uh, you know, like make sure there's a smartphone in every person's hand, and of course, find a convenient, easy way for retailers to jump onto it without the fear of getting into the tax net. Those are the things that will facilitate e-commerce. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Amr Sab. I, I think very valuable. And uh, your, your point is well taken that consumer protection, registration of vendors, these are things which shouldn't wait uh, for a policy. Uh, and and uh, I, I, I think these should be done anyways. You're, you're absolutely right in, in suggesting this at this point. So let me uh, now uh, move quickly to our colleagues from uh, the regulatory bodies and public sector organizations that have joined us. Really appreciate uh, their, their, their taking time out. Uh, let me uh, start with uh, the Competition uh, Commission of Pakistan, perhaps because uh, Amr Saab uh, touched upon consumer protection as one of the key things. So I, I, I just thought that uh, uh, taking benefit from uh, Ahmed Qadir Saab over here, we could uh, start with him. Ahmed Saab is a Director General at CCB. Please, sir. Assalamualaikum, everybody, and good morning. And um, Bakar Saab, thank you for inviting me. And I. I also must um, thank our colleagues from Priya because in 2017, I was part of the commission's delegation that was working on this e-commerce policy. So I have a bit of historical familiarity as to you know what, uh, what happened in the first two years. And unfortunately in the last year in the change of government, everything just seemed to fall apart. But um, I think that's an organizational um, dilemma that uh, not just the private sector, but sometimes even within government, uh, people who are involved in formulating something don't really get a chance to see it through till the end. Uh, we are very cognizant of the role and the importance of competition in the e-commerce policy. We are also very aware that uh, a very good e-commerce milieu will not happen in Pakistan unless you plug in all the gaps in the, let's say the supply chain or the transaction chain from the customer getting online to how he resolves his grievance. So that's the consumer protection element. Unfortunately in Pakistan with consumer protection, uh, very much a provincial subject, um, the, the harmonization between the four provinces as to how they deal with consumer protection. And I'm talking about consumer protection in the, in the physical sense, not the e-sense at this moment that is very different um, they have legal frameworks and the four provinces are at different stages of implementation of those legal frameworks i think this was a point also raised that you know albeit the existence of wonderful laws and regulations uh, where the rubber doesn't meet the road is in the process of implementation and uh, we agree uh, we also don't have a federal level legislation for consumer protection um, and um, how that translates to, let's say, cross-border transactions. We do have a trade dispute resolution organization. And I was also involved in the discussions for revamping that law. I believe that was also supported by Priya uh, in 2017, but for some reason it didn't seem to go beyond that because uh, I strongly feel the belief that if you're gonna have cross-border transactions, you need to have an updated legal framework and you need to have an updated institution to look at 
those transactions. What we have done uh, just this month, uh, after the e-commerce policy came out, um, we prepared an addendum for that policy where we wanted to critically highlight the role of the Competition Commission. Now there are two aspects here. Uh, we do look at competition and we have a slight role in consumer protection, uh, not a very large one, but that role allows us to look at deceptive marketing. So the competition uh, aspect helps us analyze and address issues that govern the supply of something coming into the market. The consumer protection, the deceptive marketing aspects helps us look at, you know, is there a transaction that's being encouraged based on wrong information. So we wanted to have our role clarity over there. So we've just sent this letter to the Ministry of Commerce, to the Secretary, with a request to make this part of the addendum of the National E-Commerce Policy Framework and uh, to make the Competition Commission a member of this National E-Commerce Council, because I believe, you know, we do have our historical perspective. We are also looking at broader aspects of e-commerce for example one of the things that i personally feel very strongly about is um, we don't have a very strong data protection regime in pakistan so now we on the one hand we're encouraging people to move into electronic transactions but what are we going to do to give them that sense of security that their data their identity their financial details their transactions their history etc is not being you know made available on the dark web or be, or being sold to whoever has the ability to purchase it. So we also are preparing some comments on the draft data protection bill and um, trying to see how it dovetails with the e-commerce policy framework. So uh, I'll I'll share our document that we prepared for the that we've sent to the commerce ministry with uh, Dr. Bakar with the request that you know anybody. Um, who needs it can get it from him or if you're in touch with me uh, if you have my email I, I'm on the competition commission's website you can reach out to me directly I'd be very happy to share this once again um, I think it's very important that different government bodies work together competition has a role we don't want it to be a very stifling role we want it to be a very encouraging role because um, I think that's the only way we get market entry we reduce uh, the barriers to people coming in and playing a part in the economy. We want that to happen. We, but we also we also are cognizant of the fact that we don't want any market abuse uh, taking place that affects consumers. Um, and uh, how data is protected is, I think, the discussion is probably a separate discussion. And I'll request Dr. Vakar and STPI to have perhaps a separate panel on this uh, where we can take this forward. Uh, so if anybody would like to see our contribution to the speech that we've sent to the Commerce Ministry, just please reach out to me or you can get my coordinates from Dr. Bukhar. I'd be very happy to share this. And I really look forward to your feedback. I think uh, it's our document, but we are willing to change it based on if you come back to me and say that, you know, you're not looked at this or this is perhaps a bit too difficult, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd be very happy to make those changes. Um, the commission is a very open organization. We are not just sugar and wheat crises. We are also looking at, you know, bigger things. Um, but, you know, we, we like to work very closely. And one of the things that we would like to propose to the Ministry of Commerce is we have a very strong advocacy element in the work that we do. So we'd like to work with you and, you know, go out and talk to consumers and e-commerce vendors and, um, you know, help create advocacy and awareness about the e-commerce policy framework. The only way this policy will get traction is if, the, if a larger number of people are involved in this thing. So, Dr. Bakar, that's my contribution. Uh, thank you for the time. Thank you, Amit sir. Really appreciate this input and for your openness and sharing this uh, data protection bill as well. I think it has uh, an overlap with uh, what uh, Amir Ibrahim sir was also saying uh, early on. But I think on this point, it's also important to take input from uh, Badr sir, who's uh, representing uh, Parks and Software Houses Association over here. I understand that uh, Pasha has been working uh, on this aspect for quite long. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, request his take on this, as well as uh, uh, Pasha has been fairly vocal around the fact that many of their tax proposals haven't uh, gone through recently. So I would love to hear that, Brother Sir, please. Yes, thank you so much, Vakar Sir. And sorry, ji, uh, I'm a bit late, Mazra. Uh, ji, humare, uh, Pasha se hum kafi different fronts pe, different teams, our uh, members have been uh, raising queries specific to e-commerce. We have proposals that we have to do with our simple proposal is that the e commerce value chain understands that in the value chain, 
एक तरफ टैक्स लगा लें बट बट हर प्रोसेस पे टैक्स ना हो हर स्टेप पे टैक्स ना हो सो so, अगर हम सो so, ये वही नेरेटिव है जो हम स्टेट बैंक को ऑनलाइन पेमेंट्स के लिए भी कहते हैं कि अगर कैश हैंडल करना सस्ता है तो वाई वुड पीपल कंसिडर अदर देन अदर रीजन रिलीजियस और टैक्सेशन इशूज और वट वाई वुड पीपल कंसिडर यूजिंग ऑनलाइन पेमेंट तो अगर मैं सौ रुपए कैश आज आप सब में एक तरफ से शुरू करूं और दूसरे एंड से पिक करूं तो वो सौ रुपए रहेंगे ऑनलाइन पेमेंट्स में आप जाके ये कोविड में उन्होंने थोड़ा एम डी आर वगैरह वो कम कर दिया बट टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग आप एटीएम ट्रांजेक्शन क्रॉस बैंक कर लें कुछ कर लें हंड्रेड रुपीज डू नॉट रिमेन हंड्रेड रुपीज and the process is very cumbersome the same is the problem with taxation actually aap e-commerce ki value chain aapko do tarah se dekhni hai jisme abhi amir ibrahim sahab baat kar rahe the ek to omp hai online marketplaces hai ye totally different so by the way ek aur challenge ye hai ki omps are phir bhi defined they are defined in fbr ki unki regulation mein hai uh, i'm sorry not a tax specific person but uh, main high level general baat bata raha hu so omp डिफाइंड है बट डायरेक्ट टू कंज्यूमर ई कॉमर्स डिफाइंड नहीं है सो डायरेक्ट टू कंज्यूमर जो ई कॉमर्स है डी टी सी जो ब्रांड्स डायरेक्ट अपनी मार्क कर रहे हैं ई कॉमर्स उनकी टैक्सेशन कैसे हैंडल होगी उनपे अभी ट्रेडिशनल वही पूरे का पूरा फॉर्मूला लग रहा है टैक्सेशन का सो वो इंसेंटिवाइज नहीं हो रहे हैं या उनको हम किसी तरह से रिलीफ नहीं दे रहे कि वो डिजिटाइज कर रहे हैं सो हेन्स दे आर नॉट इनकरेज टू डू ई कॉमर्स या जितने नए लोग आ रहे हैं उन सब में भी ये कंसर्न है कि जब हम ई कॉमर्स करते हैं तो सबसे पहले वो पूरी वैल्यू चेन सो आप कोरियर करने जाएंगे तब आपको टैक्स लग रहा है आप लेने जाएंगे प्रोक्योरमेंट करने जाएंगे तब आपको टैक्स लग रहा है आप ऑनलाइन होस्टिंग लेते हैं आपको टैक्स लग रहा है हर स्टेप पे हर प्रोसेस ऑफ द ई कॉमर्स पे पूरी वैल्यू चेन पे टैक्सेशन है दिस शुड बी वन वे टू फिगर इट आउट हम उसको कैसे सिंगल प्लेटफॉर्म पर लेकर आए और आसान कर सके एक छोटे एस के लिए सो रिमेंबर द ई कॉमर्स पॉलिसी हैज फ्यू वेरी क्लियर फोकसेस हमारे साथ वो इस पे ज़्यादा आपको और फर्दर बताती हैं शायद ने आई एम श्योर इसको और भी पहले बात की है सो आर फोकस इज एस एम ईज वेमेन ऑन्टरप्रीनोर्स यूथ एंड एक्सपोर्ट्स अगर आप इन सब चीजों की इन सब चीजों को आप देखें तो एस एम ईज को सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट एस एम ईज हैं जिनके पास डेडिकेटेड शायद रिसोर्सेज नहीं है तो हमें उनके लिए फेसिलिटेशन करनी जरूरी है So, एक लार्ज कंपनी जिस तरह जब हम बड़े ब्रांड्स की बात करते हैं तो उनके पास डेडिकेटेड टैक्स टीम्स हैं उनके पास डेडिकेटेड अकाउंटिंग फाइनेंस टीम्स हैं वो लोग इन चीजों को हैंडल कर लेते हैं बट एस एम ईस के लिए वी डू नॉट इनकरेज दम एंड हेंस दे डू नॉट डॉक्यूमेंट दम सेल्स एंड हेंस वी डू नॉट हैव अ बैंक इकोनॉमी सो आई थिंक इट्स इट्स अ रोल ओवर इफेक्ट इट्स अ स्नो बॉल इफेक्ट तो हमें बेसिक फैसिलिटेशन करनी है हम कुछ चीजों की तो हमने रिकमेंडेशन डीप टाइप भेजी हुई है मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आई को भी जो किस बजट में नहीं गए आगे भी भेजी है जहां जहां भी हम उनको करते हैं ई कॉमर्स स्पेसिफिक भी हमने अभी हमारी एक्चुअली डीप टाइप एफ पी आर के साथ नहीं इतना हुआ है बट वी हैलरेडी डन इट विद स्टेट बैंक मगर अभी एक एक ये एंगल था दूसरा एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट एंगल जो है जब भी आप ई कॉमर्स ये है कि आपने बेसिक वेबसाइट बना के उसको मार्केटिंग भी करनी है जब मार्केटिंग करते हैं तो मार्केटिंग के ऊपर डिजिटल मार्केटिंग पे स्पेसिफिकली देर इज हैवी टैक्सेशन जो कि पिछली दफा में कम हुई है पिछले फाइनेंस बिल में सो so 35% से 25% परसेंट की रिवाई मगर अगर आप लोकल पेमेंट्स टू फॉरेन एंटिटीज करते हैं तो फिर आपके ऊपर रेमिटेंस टैक्सेस भी हैं सो so जब आप गूगल और फेसबुक पेमेंट करें तो 10-11% आपको वो भी देना है सो इवेंचुअली आप अपने सौ रुपए जो मार्केटिंग पे स्पेंड करना चाहते हैं विजिबिलिटी लाने के लिए वो आपको इवेंचुअली सत्तर रुपए या इतने पैसे बचते हैं जो कि आप इवेंचुअली स्पेंड कर सकते हैं सो यू नीड टू ऑल्सो थिंक पूरी वैल्यू चेन का एनालिसिस होने की जरूरत है और उस वैल्यू चेन में हम जरूर टैक्स लें ऑफ कोर्स मकसद ये नहीं है कि टैक्स ना दिया जाए बट एक तो उसको सिंप्लीफाई कर लिया जाए एक एंड पे ले लें या स्टार्टिंग पे या एंड पे और उस पूरी वैल्यू चेन को किसी तरह से उसमें अकोमोडेट कर लें और उस प्रोसेस को सिंप्लीफाई कर लें आई थिंक दैट्स माई बट एस पे आई थिंक आर जो है वो ज्यादा बेहतर आई एम श्योर स्पेसिफिकली टू जीएसटी विद होल्डिंग और वो सब बात कर चुके होंगे एक और जो बहुत बड़ा हमारे लिए मसला है स्पेसिफिकली uh, सॉफ्टवेयर वाली साइड से वो uh, हमारे टर्न ओवर टैक्स का भी है सो so, हम प्रॉफिट में हो या लॉस में हो हमारे पे पिछली हुकूमत से एक टर्न ओवर टैक्स भी लग गया जो आठ परसेंट था फिर दो परसेंट कर दिया गया सो दीज आर लाइक रियल चैलेंजेस एज अ स्मॉल बिजनेस टू इवन सरवाइव फंडामेंटल्स पे चैलेंज आ जाता है सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द फ्यू थिंग्स जिसका मैं आई कैन ऑफकोर्स फ्रॉम पाशा परसपेक्टिव आई कैन सर्टनली डीप टाइव एंड शेयर स्पेसिफिक क्लॉज बाईज फीडबैक एज वेल
thank you brother sir and and uh, i think प्रोग्रेस किया वो स्टेट बैंक के साथ स्मॉल पैकेट माइक्रो एक्सपोर्ट्स की तरफ था जिसपे एसफन यार ने कराची में कस्टम्स के साथ स्टेट बैंक के साथ बहुत डीप टाइप काम किया और हमने लार्ज कंटेनर एक्सपोर्ट्स की जो रेगुलेशन थी उनको हमने स्मॉल पैकेट माइक्रो एक्सपोर्ट्स की तरफ हमने ई फॉर्म की जो थी एक स्पेसिफिक नीड उसको हमने कोरियर के साथ ही अटैच कर लिया है और वो उसका ट्रायल भी हमने सक्सेसफुली कर लिया विद सना सफीन एज गुल अहमद एंड खाडी और अब हम कस्टम्स के इफ आई एम नॉट और सुनिधि आई कैन प्रोबली स्पेसिफिकली हाईलाइट कि हम एग्जैक्टली किस स्टेज पे हैं बट आई थिंक वीबॉक के लिए कस्टम्स के पास है इस वक्त दैट प्रपोजल और सो uh, so इसलिए हमें कुछ चीजें उस पे प्रोग्रेस हो रही है इस तरह uh, 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 हम और भी चीजों पे जो हैं कस्टमर्स के कस्टमर प्रोटेक्शन है कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन है मर्चेंट प्रोटेक्शन के ऊपर भी हमने फोकस uh, किया है uh, कुछ चीजों से मीडिया के साथ बात कर रहे हैं एसएमईज के एंगल से भी तो कुछ चीजों में प्रोग्रेस हो रही है बट आई एग्री आमिर साहब की एक बात पे कि शायद हमने बहुत सारी चीजें वो जो बॉलिंग द सी वाली बात अभी आप ओशन वाली बात कर रहे थे आई थिंक दैट साइड तो हम अब हम कोशिश करें कि हम स्पेसिफिक फोकस्ड स्मॉलर ग्रुप्स ऑफ ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड पीपल विद इन दोज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बना सकें कि जो लोग टेक्सेशन स्पेसिफिक हैं जो लॉजिस्टिक्स के स्पेसिफिक हैं जो लोग फाइनेंस या और टॉपिक्स को कर सकते हैं ऑनलाइन पेमेंट्स को कर सकते हैं सो वी ट्राइंग टू हैव स्मॉलर ग्रुप्स ताकि हम ज्यादा लीन मीन ऑपरेट कर सकें एंड देन वर्क विद द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स मोर क्लोजली ऑन ईच ऑफ द पिलियड्स इन पेर एंड देन फोकस ऑन दैट जी थैंक यू ब्रदर साहब वेरी वैल्यूएबल इनपुट्स पर्टिकुलरली अराउंड द टैक्सेशन ऑन डिजिटल मार्केटिंग a uh, local payment to foreign companies and the minimum ta- uh, turnover tax uh, it's well taken i think after chuka ministry of it ki baat ki so i'll i'll uh, follow up uh, probably uh, in that sequence and we have uh, junaid sahab over here who's the ceo of uh, ignite i understand that ignite has been working in this space or bahut sari wo firms jinke masail ki aapne baat ki they've been helping them as well So, uh, Junaid Sab, uh, our peers, we would we really appreciate your quick inputs, please. Ji, uh, Samalikum. Uh, I think uh, uh, talking about startups, I think uh, Ignite is uh, one of the focus area, and uh, we are helping startups to uh, build into a bigger businesses. Uh, as far as taxes are concerned, I think there are certain uh, concerns of the startups, and there are things they are impeding their uh, progress. Uh, like brother mentioned uh, uh, what to talk about sme even the uh, the small startups they don't have accounts finance people they don't have understanding of taxation uh, in the e-commerce policy uh, we have uh, proposed that uh, maybe banks and bigger investment companies who are investing into startups they are give, given exemptions and uh, uh, some tax uh, reliefs but i think uh, we should also give some tax relief some tax benefits to uh, tax holidays to the startups as well uh, i think uh, there are certain startups who are just uh, investing their own money and they are building up operations so uh, i think a, a good uh, holiday period should be given to the startups um, uh, on the tax side as well uh, for them this overall tax regime is definitely complicated once it's not their expertise so uh, i think that's one area uh, where we need to facilitate uh, the startups and uh, another challenge that the startups are facing is uh, on the this anti competition side uh, and the, we have had examples where uh, the star- startups have been knocked out by uh, the existing bigger players uh, through anti competitive uh, steps so i i think uh, uh, some measures uh, need to be proposed on this anti competitiveness uh, uh, activities of uh, the bigger companies who are established players uh, to protect these startups because they are really fragile in a different sense uh, and looking at the overall landscape the risk uh, proposition i think uh, we need to uh, safeguard the startups because uh, they they will be 
thinking in the interventions and uh, i think uh, we we see a good future and good interventions from them in the future so we need to protect them so uh, that's on the startup part uh, i would also like to quickly touch on the data protection part uh, uh, it's a challenge on one hand you need to protect the consumers uh, protect the data give them the confidence that whatever data they are uh, giving is uh, protected but on the other hand uh, the regulations and the, the measures should not be uh, a barrier to the businesses so that's a, a challenge that uh, uh, we are trying to strike a balance in uh, and uh, uh, on the data protection bill we will engage in subsequent consultation with the businesses as well uh, to uh, to strike uh, a balance which is a, a win win situation for both uh, uh, the consumer and uh, for the businesses as well so and uh, in their consultation uh, we are totally open uh, whatever feedback you have uh, and uh, we will welcome every uh, uh, business uh, and business vertical to come to us and share their point of view on the personal data protection bill so uh, that's a few points from my side thank thank you vinay sir uh, and i think because you you touched upon taxation as as uh, constraint as a binding constraint human so i, I think we will we'll move now straight to uh, the revenue authorities over here tax revenue authorities and i do understand that they've been working closely with night uh, on this uh, uh, subject uh, so so we we, we have uh, here uh, of nansa from uh, fbr and we have representation from the provincial revenue authorities but uh, I'll, I'll first give a chance to uh, the provinces uh, perhaps uh, given that uh, they have uh, a greater interface with this sector particularly around gst and tax uh, gst on taxation as well as withholding taxes on uh, uh, gst on services as well as withholding taxes on services sector as well as minimum turnover tax uh, on services so uh, maybe uh, uh, i i could start with capra uh, khyber uh, pakhtunkhwa revenue authority i see if the kharsa fazl amin saab if if jeep the kharsa जी बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम सर जैसे आपने पहले बताया शुरू में कि खैबर पख्तून खा एज बेसिकली पॉइनियर टू रिड्यूस रेट्स ऑन सर्विसेज व्हिच आर डायरेक्टली या इनडायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड विद ईकॉमर्स इसमें बेसिकली देयर आर थ्री कैटेगरीज ओएमपीज पे ओरिजिनली 15% सेल टैक्स था which was last year slashed down to 5% but after the issuance of e-commerce policy it has been further slashed down to 2% sir and then digital services digital services is a very wide term it covers all services in which digital technologies are information technology are used all variety of services service component is ओरिजिनली ये 15 परसेंट था लास्ट ईयर हम इसको 5 परसेंट पे लाए अब आफ्टर ई कॉमर्स पॉलिसी इसको हमने फर्दर कट डाउन कर दिया 2 परसेंट पे राइड हेलिंग सर्विसेज राइड हेलिंग ओरिजिनली 5 परसेंट पे था ये हमने जब राइड हेलिंग के जो इन्वेस्टर्स हैं व्हेन दे मेट आवर पॉलिटिकल लीडरशिप तो वी हैड वेरी डिटेल्ड डिस्कशन तो उन डिस्कशन के बाद दे बेसिकली सक्सीडेड टू कन्विंस अस that ride hailing is a business which creates employment in order to i mean generate employment in the province we accepted their request and we outrightly slashed down the rate to 2% from 15% ab sir do teen issue aise hain which i want to discuss because taxation of e-commerce is a very very difficult complex to me आपके ज्यादातर इशू सर होंगे एफ बी आर के साथ क्योंकि मैं एफ बी आर में पैंतीस साल रह चुका हूं एफ बी आर में आपका सबसे पहले डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी की जो इंपोर्ट्स हैं टेंजिबल इंपोर्ट्स उनकी कस्टम ड्यूटीज का ट्रीटमेंट क्या होगा उनकी जो उनके थ्रू जो ई कॉमर्स में गुड्स ट्रेड होनी है उन गुड्स का फेडरल सेल टैक्स ट्रीटमेंट क्या होगा और जो ट्रांसैक्शन होनी है उन ट्रांसैक्शंस में इनकम टैक्स की ट्रीटमेंट क्या होगी और 
जो उसमें सर्विस कंपोनेंट होना है उसके उसके और टेंजिबल और नॉन टेंजिबल इनटेंजिबल कंपोनेंट जो होंगे ट्रांसमिशन के उनकी डिविजिबिलिटी बिटवीन प्रोविंस एंड फेडरेशन कैसे हो देखिए सर जो ई कॉमर्स है ना इट विल बी इनविजिबल टू मैन हमें तमाम ई कॉमर्स पॉलिसी में मुझे अभी तक ये समझ नहीं आई कि कौन सी रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी है जो हमें बताएगी कि जी ये ओ एम पी बिजनेस स्टार्ट हो गया है इसको आप रजिस्टर कर लें फला फर्म ने ई कॉमर्स में इन्वेस्टमेंट की है इसको आप रजिस्टर कर लें कोई हमारे पास ऐसा हमारे पास तो कैपेसिटी है नहीं सर ये इनविजिबिलिटी इसको इनको डिटेक्ट करने की दूसरा सर एक और क्वेश्चन बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट यहां उठा था कि जी मैं अगर ट्रेडर हूं मैं अपना ओ यूज कर रहा हूं मैं उसकी कमर्शियल सर्विस नहीं दे रहा अगर मैं उसका कोई कमीशन चार्ज सेपरेटली इनवाइस नहीं कर रहा तो मुझ पर कोई प्रोविशन सेल टैक्स नहीं लगेगा सर अगर मैं उसको डिस्टिंक्टली उसका कोई चार्ज इनवाइस कर रहा हूं तो इनवाइस का वो कंपोनेंट प्रोविशियल गवर्नमेंट के पास जाएगा गुड्स का कंपोनेंट जो जो है वो सर फेडरल गवर्नमेंट के पास इनको सर मेरा ख्याल जब तक एफ पी आर ऑन बोर्ड सर आपके साथ ना हो वो चारों टैक्सेस उनके जो हैं सर वो टैक्सेस आपसे रिलेटेड हैं उन टैक्सेस में ज्यादा डिफिकल्टीज आएंगी प्रोविंस तो आप प्रोविंस को गाइड करेंगे प्रोविंस को लिस्टेंस आप जितने भी रजिस्टर्ड बंदे होंगे पाचा दे देगी या मिनिस्ट्री दे देगी हम तो उनको सिंपली टैक्स पेयर फेसिलिटेशन फिलासफी के तहत हम उनको रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे वो रजिस्टर हो जाएंगे और हमारा सर कंपोनेंट भी नॉमिनल होता है कितना कंपोनेंट होगा जो कि सर्वर चार्ज होगा ई कॉमर्स में अगर गुड्स सौ रुपए की है तो सर हो सकता है सर्वर चार्ज उसमें दो रुपए हो अच्छा दूसरी चीज सर पंजाब का बार बार हमने जिक्र सुना है कि जी उन्होंने प्लास्टिक मनी यूज पे कंसेशनल रेट दिया है अब सर ई कॉमर्स क्या प्लास्टिक मनी के यूज का नाम है या डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजीज के यूज का नाम है इन ऑर्डर टू प्रमोट बिजनेस एंड ट्रेड प्लास्टिक मनी पाकिस्तान में तो सर हार्डली मेरे ख्याल फोर्टी मिलियन लोग हैं जो जिनके पास कार्ड्स हैं इस वक्त दो सौ बीस मिलियन में फोर्टी मिलियन में भी सर मेजोरिटी बिजनेस मैन है जो कि डिजिटल पेमेंट्स करते हैं और बाकी जिनके पास सर प्लास्टिक मनी है प्लास्टिक करेंसी के थ्रू यूज करते हैं जो ट्रांजेक्शन वो वो लोग हैं जो ऊपर क्लास के हैं क्या ये ऐसा तो नहीं कि हमने टैक्स रिड्यूस करके प्लास्टिक मनी के थ्रू एक खास क्लास को बेनिफिट दे दिया हो और डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी टैक्सेशन की तरफ चले गए हो ये चीजें सर बैंकिंग काउंसिल से बाकायदा मशवरा होना चाहिए था क्योंकि अगर कल को सर हमने बैंकिंग काउंसिल से इसका लॉजिक मिल जाता है तो के वी आर ए भी इंशाला तला इस कॉमर्स की परसुमेंस में इन इन मयर्स को फॉलो करें लेकिन हमें इसकी कोजेंट आर्गूमेंट्स चाहिए कुछ जी बाकी सर जहां तक के पी का तल्लक है के पी इज ए स्मॉल प्रोविंस पॉपुलेशन आपके सामने है थर्टी फाइव मिलियन टोटल इसकी पॉपुलेशन है लेकिन केपी में बिजनेस है सर अभी तक जो ट्रेडिशनली आपको पता केपी कैश इकॉनमी है हम खुद चाहते हैं सर कि ये डॉक्यूमेंटेड इकॉनमी बन जाए हमने डॉक्यूमेंटेशन के लिए पिछले साल सर तकरीबन सिक्सटीन सर्विसेज कैटेगरीज पे रेट रिड्यूस किए और इस साल हमने ट्वेंटी सेवन कैटेगरीज पे रेट रिड्यूस किए और वो तमाम वो सर्विसेज हैं सर जो एस एम ईज में जिनके बिजनेस जी जी थैंक यू इफ्तार साहब मे बी आई थिंक ये अच्छा हो जाएगा कि इसी पॉइंट पे इफ आई कैन मूव टू आर कॉलीग्स इन द सिंध प्रोविंस बट आई थिंक आपके जो 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 पॉइंट अराउंड द प्लास्टिक मनी वॉज इम्पोर्टेंट और आई थिंक वो वी कैन ऑल्सो पोज टू पाकिस्तान बैंक एसोसिएशन एंड वी कैन टेक अ रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम पी बी ए 
and, and, and come back to you that that's well taken. Uh, maybe in the later parts of the discussion, our colleagues from the private sector uh, may, may like to respond. But I, I, I first want to give chance to Ms. Mona Mehfuz Saiba. Uh, she has joined us from Sindh Revenue Board, Government of Sindh. Uh, Madam, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Vukak. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to share the things which we have already uh, done uh, in the e-commerce e field. Uh, there's NTC, which all of us know, okay, National Tax Council, has, which maybe all provinces regularly meet, and we are trying to harmonize the uh, tax structure. Uh, in addition, single return, pe bhi we are working uh, banks ke saath humne meetings ki hai, and we are actually waiting for the input of the stakeholders ke wo humne batayi, ke what type of single uh, return uh, they are looking for, or uh, telecom se or banks, dono sector se humne communication ki hai. Other than that, exports, jo hai, IT ka, it's already exempted in uh, SID. All type of exports of IT uh, software is exempted. So, spe, to, koi, uh, nahi hai. plus we are also working on negative list. And hopefully by January, SRB may negative list uh, ki implementation. Ho jayegi. Negative list se ye fayda hoga ke jo classification or litigation ke jo disputes chal rahe hai, those will be resolved because ye, and, and we have this, uh, we have learned the experience of India and EU in this regard. And negative list will be a great facilitation for the for the e-commerce also. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, ki baat hui thi ke Punjab ne uh, point of sale uh, introduce karaya hai. I just want to uh, let you know ke uh, Sindh has actually taken a lead in that. Or humne last year hi POS ka successful uh, uh, experiment kiya hai. We have implemented in beauty parlors, gyms, and, and this kind of beauty and gym ki jo field hai. And POS is being run jahan pe e-invoices generate ho rahi hai. And we are now going towards ke auto generate ho return. Just make invoices back end pe hi uh, ban jayegi. So uh, this one plus single return pe hum log kaam kar rahe hai. We are also in agreement with FBR. Uh, just make a pral se FBR ka data sharing ke liye with between FBR and SRB. Plus we have also introduced Stripe. Last August humne usko introduce kiya hai. Stripe me uh, jo invoices hai, wo back end pe linkages hai. PRA, SRB or FBR. All three tax uh, departments are using the same uh, 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 module as Strife, ka, uh, which again, you know, transparency or clarity uh, registered persons ke liye hai, ke single uh, system is being used in all three uh, tax authorities. Uh, data sharing ho plus VBOX hai hamare linkages hai, and VBOX, as you know, is customs ka ek, uh, automated system hai, and custom is the lead agency in national single window. So we already have linkages in VBOC. I'm just telling okay, what are the things which we are doing to uh, make ground for the facilitation of e-commerce in SRB. And we are very much aware of it, that okay, uh, e-commerce is the future, especially uh, Karachi, jo hai, uh, services sector may Karachi is much ahead. And not just Karachi, we are also now uh, making our structures in other cities of Sindh uh, to remote areas of Sindh ko hum log cover kar rahe hai. Uh, Sakhar mein, Hyderabad mein, Meepur Khas mein, SRB is expanding now. So we are trying to expand to the remote areas. Maha pe bhi agar e-commerce ke hain, startups hain. So we are here uh, to help them out as much as we can. Uh, iske alawa, jo hai, uh, online registration ki facility hai. You can, you know, just sit at home. You don't have to come to any office. You don't have to come physically. Aap online apni registration kare whenever you start a business. Uh, Small uh, businesses ke hawale se baat hui, ek threshold hai certain jis pe ke tax ki exemption hai. Beyond that threshold, hum registration karte hai. So there are a lot of things which SRB is actually doing. And I will just sum up ke we are, we, we are, we are really waiting ke hume aaye aur hume bataya jaye ke how come we help the business. And we are open to that. In fact, we were also planning to have a seminar in our in SRB where we would invite all the uh, respectable guests and all the uh, stakeholders to come and let us know what we can do, which will, uh, which will help e-commerce to expand and to flourish in the province of Sindh. And we are also in link with the PRA, with FBR, and uh, the meetings are happening, single return ki baat ho hai and all this. And summing up, 
मैं यही कहूंगी कि एस आर बी इज वेरी मच ओपन टू एनी टाइप ऑफ ई कॉमर्स एनी टाइप ऑफ न्यू आइडियाज एंड वी आर एक्चुअली लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू हैव मोर आइडियाज फ्रॉम यू पीपल थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम फॉर योर ओपननेस ओवर हेयर एंड आई थिंक ऑन योर पॉइंट अराउंड uh the 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 tax filing and negative list i think the industry players would come back to you because that is something which has been uh sort of uh, they they've been desiring this for quite some time um, i think before i move on to uh, our our next colleague badr saab wanted to add something to what uh, uh srb and and capra have added so uh, badr saab if you can quickly uh, add your input थैंक यू सो मच सो आई थिंक इफ्तार साहब आई रियली अप्रिशिएट कि आपने कुछ बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट चीजें हाईलाइट की कि आई थिंक कि इवन डेफिनेशन ऑफ ई कॉमर्स कैसी होनी चाहिए कि कौन किसको आप कंसिडर करेंगे ई कॉमर्स प्लास्टिक मनी के यूज को करेंगे या कैसे होगा कौन सी टेक्नोलॉजीज सो आई थिंक एक टेक अवे जो मैं यहाँ से आज लेकर जा रहा हूँ एंड आई थिंक आई वर्क मोर क्लोजली विद असवंद आर एंड फ्रॉम चेंज स्टोर एसोसिएशन परस्पेक्टिव एंड ऑल्सो मिस आयशाज ऑफिस इन द मिनिस्ट्री कि हम आपके लिए इस चीज पे फर्दर क्लैरिटी ला सकें मे बी एज एन अटेंडम टू द पॉलिसी और एज एन अदर वाइट पेपर कि क्या चीजें कैसे कंसिडर होनी चाहिए चाहे सबकी बेस लाइन डेफिनेशन एक हो जाए सो वील ट्राई टू वर्क विद द रेस्ट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री और हम बेस लाइन डेफिनेशन के ऊपर काम करके उनके ऊपर एक कंसेंसिस ला के हम आप सबके साथ शेयर भी कर लेंगे और आप सबका फीडबैक भी लेकर उसको अगर फर्दर इंप्रूव करना होगा तो फर्दर भी कर लेंगे ये चीज एक चैलेंजिंग मैं इसलिए नोटिस करता हूँ सिंस आई नो के मीडिया के साथ भी एक चैलेंज है कि एसएमईज की डेफिनेशन हर किसी की फर्क है वी आर की एसएमई की फर्क है स्टेट बैंक की फर्क है स्मीडा की अपनी फर्क है टेक्निकली स्मीडा इज दी अथॉरिटी ऑन एस एम ईज बट दे हैव अ डिफरेंट डेफिनेशन देन ऑल ऑफ दीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो स्टेट बैंक के बैंक जो है वो अपने हिसाब से देते हैं एस एम ईज के लोन और डेफिनेशन है उनकी सो आई आई थिंक हम ई कॉमर्स में हमारे पास ये टाइम है कि हम इसी स्टेज पे ये एक क्लैरिटी ले आए ताकि कल को ये सारी अथॉरिटीज के लिए पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सबके लिए डेफिनेशन की क्लैरिटी आ जाए तो ये मिस आयशा की तरफ से हमें पहले भी एक रिक्वेस्ट आई तो वील ट्राई टू फर्दर क्लैरिफाई ऑन दिस एक और सॉरी छोटी सी चीज ऐड कर दूं एंड एस आर बी से मैडम ने जिस तरह डिटेल्स दी रियली अप्रिशिएट दैट आई थिंक हमें एक 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 और चीज जो करने की जरूरत है थोड़ा सा इस चीज को भी देखने की जरूरत है कि एस एम ईज की जो कॉस्ट ऑफ कंप्लायंस है वो बहुत ज्यादा है पेपर वर्क बैक एंड फोर्थ लॉट ऑफ फॉर्म्स तो वो आई अंडरस्टैंड कि हार्मोनाइजेशन में और सिंगल रिटर्न में शायद हम वो बेहतर हो जाए बट अगर हम उसको सिंप्लीफाई कर सकें और अगर हम थोड़ा सा उसको फ्रॉम अ माइंड सेट परस्पेक्टिव अगर हम इस एंगल से देख सकें कि लोग उससे डरे मत बल्कि उनको फायदा हो कि हम ये करेंगे तो हम फेसिलिटेट होंगे तो उसको अगर हम उस तरह से रीवर्क uh, कर सकें I think maybe in phases, जैसे भी आप लोग बेहतर समझे बट दैट वॉज माई अदर कॉस्ट ऑफ कंप्लायंस वॉज माई अदर कंसर्न फ्रॉम एन एस एम ई परस्पेक्टिव एक तो ऑफकोर्स रिसोर्सेज का इशू है जो हमने पहले बात की और मिनिस्ट्री से मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आई टी से भी उन्होंने इमाम साहब ने भी हाईलाइट की बात तो बट असल जो मेरा था वो आई थिंक ये भी था कि डेफिनेशन पर भी हम यूनिफाई हो सके तो वील वर्क विद ऑल स्टेक होल्डर्स कि हम उसकी एक प्रपोजल लेके आएंगे उसके ऊपर सब एक दफा दोबारा डिस्कशन कर लेंगे मुझे अगर एक मिनट बोलने की इजाजत दें या आप काइंडली जी 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 प्लीज प्लीज सर मैं सर ये अर्ज करूंगा ये जो चीजें एस की तरफ से आई हैं ये चीजें नेशनल लेवल पे हैं के पी आर ए पी आर ए एस आर बी और बी आर ए ये तमाम ऑटोमेटेड हैं राइट फ्रॉम रजिस्ट्रेशन टू प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ द डेक्लेशन इंक्लूडिंग फाइलिंग ऑफ डेक्लेशन एंड फाइलिंग ऑफ ऑल स्टेटमेंट्स जहां तक सर सिंगल रिटर्न का तलक है इसमें एन टी सी एफ पी आर ने ऑलरेडी इसमें बड़ा इनिशियटिव लिए और सूबों ने इसमें बड़ा कोऑपरेट किया है अब सिंगल रिटर्न सर सिर्फ उन सर्विसेज पे लगेगा जो कि नेशनल लेवल पे चल रही है जो इंट्रा प्रोविंशियल सर्विसेज होंगी उनका वो रिटर्न जो है वो प्रोविंस अपना रिटर्न लेंगे हमने सर ये सोचा है कि जो इंट्रा प्रोविंस रिटर्न्स होंगे और जिन पे रिड्यूस रेट ऑफ फ्रंट होगा उनके हम रिटर्न्स बहुत ज्यादा सिंप्लीफाई कर देंगे इतने ज्यादा सिंप्लीफाई कर देंगे कि हो सकता है हाफ पेज पे वो रिटर्न आ जाए जी एक चीज दूसरी चीज सर ई कॉमर्स में एक और बड़ा इशू जो आपकी हेल्प चाहिए हमें मैंने ओ लगाया हुआ है कराची में मैं सारे पाकिस्तान में मुख्तलिफ होलसेलर से या डीलर से 
डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करवाता हूं ऑनलाइन बुकिंग कर अब मैं केपी में भी भेज रहा हूं बलूचिस्तान में भी भेज रहा हूं पंजाब में भी भेज रहा हूं उसी में भी भेज मैं कमीशन चार्ज करता हूं फ्रॉम डीलर्स या होलसेलर्स और कुछ कमीशन मैं लेता हूं जो बायर होता है या जब बायर से मैं नहीं भी लेता मैं सेलर से ले लेता हूं अब सर उसकी जो रेवेन्यू डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है गुड्स की तो यकीनन एफबीआर को जाएगी जो सर्विस चार्जेस की जो टैक्स की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है वो कैसे होगी एक तो सर उस पे थोड़ा सा आप लोगों की हमें गाइडेंस रहनमाई चाहिए होगी ताकि हम सारी प्रोविंशियल अथॉरिटीज मिलके इस पे प्लानिंग कर सकें एक सर और टाइप सॉरी आपको इंटरप्ट करना चाहता हूं इस पे हम मेरे ख्याल में हम एक अलग डीप टाइप सेशन मिनिस्ट्री के साथ मिलके हम रेवेन्यू अथॉरिटीज और जो कुछ स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं हम मिलके इस पे इकट्ठे एक आई थिंक कर लेते हैं बिकॉज ये सबके लिए चैलेंज है तो हम सबको मिलकर इकट्ठे इसको डिफाइन करना होगा ताकि सबकी विन विन सिचुएशन आ सके हर किसी के हिसाब से सर मैं छोटी सी और अर्थ करूं जो इंपोर्टेड गुड्स आती हैं और जो एक्सपेक्टी सेल्स होती हैं वो तो सर एफ बी आर का स्टैंडर्ड रेट उस पर अप्लाई करता है आगे जो ट्रेडिंग चेन में चले जाती हैं वो एफ बी आर के टैक्सेस को ना सिर्फ स्केप करती हैं बल्कि उनके आगे जाके फिर रेट्स भी कम हो जाती हैं ये चीजें भी सर बड़ी आपको बड़े इसमें फ्रेगमेंटेशन मिलेगी टैरिफ स्ट्रक्चर में लोकल टैरिफ स्ट्रक्चर में जी सर टेक केयर करना है आपने जी 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 नोटेड सो सो ऑन दिस आई थिंक आमिर साहब वांट्स टू मेक एन एडिशनल पॉइंट ऑन दिस जी जी सर Hey, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Akar, for letting me back in. Look, uh, we started talking about e-commerce. This is now uh, transcending into a tax discussion, which perhaps highlights that taxation, which is, is an impediment. Uh, I think the start of my point was that we shouldn't try to boil the ocean. If we take a different approach, and we say that we have generated 160 billion now. जनरेट कर दिया है ई कॉमर्स से राइट हम जाके देखें कि क्या चीजें हैं सबसे बड़े बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स सॉरी बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स हमारे कौन से हैं नॉट बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स बट रोड ब्लॉक्स कौन से हैं सो हुएवर हैज बीन वर्किंग ऑन इट यू नो लाइक ऑल दीज थिंग्स दैट वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट नॉट ऑल ऑफ देम आर इक्वल वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट एक्सेस वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट वेरियस थिंग्स लेट्स ट्राई टू स्कोर देम and then figure out ke kis wali cheez pe sabse zyada impact padta hai isko accelerate karne ke liye theek hai otherwise we will be going in multiple directions uh, we won't be able to prioritize so agar humne ye nine pillars banaye hain inme se teen kaun si aisi cheeze hain jisme agar hum significant impact pade to disproportionately e-commerce tez hogi acha abhi tak hum bahut sari cheeze documentation ki baat kar rahe hain dekhiye agar hum sirf cheeze simplify karenge जो कि एक डिजिटल का एक मेन प्रेमिस होता है तो चीजें ऑटोमेटिकली बेहतर होना शुरू हो जाएंगी वी डोंट हैव टू टीच पीपल अगेन आई वुड सजेस्ट बदर के यू नो लाइक वाइल इट इज नाइस टू टॉक अबाउट यू नो 60 परसेंट ऑफ आवर पॉपुलेशन इज यूथ वी मे मिस आउट द पीपल हु एक्चुअली हैव अफोर्डेबिलिटी एंड वॉन्ट टू गेट ऑन टू ई कॉमर्स राइट सो लेट्स नॉट एलियनेट दैम सेकेंडली येस वी कीप ऑन टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑल आई एम ट्राइंग टू से ओवर हेयर इज गेट रेड ऑफ द रोड ब्लॉक्स if the rest of the things are okay you don't have to educate people they will come over here log already bade entrepreneurial hain unhone whatsapp ke upar apni dukane shuru kar di hain wo tasveer bhejte hain baki sari cheeze karte hain technology kar rahe hain kyun wo whatsapp istemal karte hain 30 35 million banda pakistan mein kyunki whatsapp badi aasan hai agar hum baki cheezon mein cheeze aasani lana shuru kar denge to hame e commerce ki policy ki zarurat nahi padegi the policy should be made as a matter of exception not as a matter of vision in my uh, opinion and just try to start taking the road blocks out and as it appears that maybe for some of the legitimate companies the taxation appears to be a road block as of right now i think from a technology perspective there are other road blocks we don't have as many people as many vendors as many merchants there are million merchants in pakistan the biggest road block if you ask me is digital payments jab aapki digital payments better ho jayengi aapki e commerce hona shuru ho jayega आज भी अगर रिपोर्ट के मुताबिक 60 फीसद लोग जो हैं वो कैश पे करते हैं मेरा ख्याल है कैश इससे ज्यादा है साइड से बहुत ज्यादा है लेकिन जब तक हम डिजिटल पेमेंट्स पे नहीं आएंगे तो सही मायनों में हम ई कॉमर्स नहीं इस्तेमाल करेंगे सो दैट इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू से मीटिंग
thank you, uh, Vakar, for giving me this opportunity. I realize that, Amr, sir. Thank you so much. And I think on your on, on your point around the road talks, as well as other binding constraints, uh, I think our colleagues at the World Bank has done a recent study around this subject. And I think if Gonzalo is here, I can quickly bring him in to update on that aspect. They had done a mapping of uh, this space and what are those two or three things which uh, Amr Saab also suggested, but I think uh, the, the, the bank has also sort of uh, pinpointed the minimum set of things that, that needs to be done in line with the best practice. Uh, Gonzalo, please. Thank you. Thank you, Vakar, uh, for, for bringing me in for the invitation. Uh, it has been great to hear from private sector government. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, the the e-commerce the e policy framework that has been prepared by the government, I think, is a, is a great uh, step in the right direction. As it has been said many times, implementation is the crucial element here. So uh, let's let's say so the World Bank stands ready to support the Ministry of Commerce in the in the implementation through the Pakistan Goes Global project. So on e-commerce, let me say technology made it possible. It has made it possible years ago. COVID made it inevitable, right? So COVID made e-commerce inevitable. One can think of e-commerce in several in several ways, but the the common element, whether it is e-commerce for the domestic economy or it is e-commerce for exports and imports, uh, Pakistan doesn't seem to be ready yet. Uh, there's a uh, one key element there that is only 17% of households have used internet over the last three months, right? That places Pakistan among the countries with the lowest internet, internet penetration uh, in the world. And even if you think about government initiatives, so another indicator one could take is uh, what is happening with e-government initiatives. Because if, if the government takes a lot of e-government initiatives, that's going to induce more use of, of internet and more infrastructure around internet. And what we see on, on e-governance uh, on e-government initiatives is that Pakistan rates ranks 148 uh, a, among about a 200, 200 countries. So they, they are not there yet. So what I would uh, say is crucial elements to boost uh, e-commerce. One can think about uh, three things. Many things have been said about taxation, about consumer protection, so I won't mention that. But the other element has to do with digital payments, which is something that particularly when one thinks about international payments gateway, is something that needs to be developed. And uh, in a recent analysis and recent survey we did with digital uh, traders, with uh, traders in the, in the information technology services sector with Pasha, uh, we found that that is a, a crucial element, right? It's a crucial problem that firms have dealing with international payments. But I would add, and, and given that, that e-commerce has been made now extremely uh, necessary even for, for domestic transactions, that is, what is happening with the digital capabilities of firms? Not of the larger or more sophisticated firms, but of the micro and small firms that will need to participate in e-commerce, thinking about the grocery store next door that will need to deliver, will need to have a platform so that you can order. Uh, and so investments in digital enhancements of firms will need to uh, be done if one wants to uh, make some progress actually on uh, on e-commerce at the at the business to to consumer and uh, in the domestic level. So that is one element. So if the, the government should be thinking about initiatives to support digital enhancement, on that we have been working with Smeda um, in, in discussing what what potential avenues for, for support uh, are there. And then if one gets, and I will finish here, so um, I, I won't make it too long. The other angle of e-commerce is the, the, the angle of digital trade, uh, of international digital trade. And there is, that, that is an area in which Pakistan has a lot to gain, uh, and has uh, a lot of opportunities. Now, one element that you see there when you look at the ecosystem, and this is something that is in our latest report, is that there are so many freelancers, which is a great thing. It's an indicator of entrepreneurship, right? So that one, one could stay there. A lot of freelancers selling software, selling digital, uh, you know, graphic design, etc., etc., to the rest of the world is an indicator of entrepreneurship, yes. But why is it that these freelancers cannot group together or grow into larger companies. 
and set up uh, more of you know engines of growth and engines of job creation. So what are the elements that are preventing these companies from growing? One element there, I would say, is again the issue of international payments. As long as international payments are small, you can handle them, you can uh, have them channeled through these platforms that allow for small payments and, and, and the process is relatively small, relatively uh, straightforward. But once you become a relatively larger company, then that international payment becomes more of a hurdle. And that may be one of the elements that is preventing the growth uh, of firms in that segment. So these are things that uh, I believe the government would need to take stock to uh, encourage some more dynamism in that sector that is a promising sector uh, for the years to come. So I will stop here. Uh, there's more to be said, but I'll, I'll stop here so we can have more of a discussion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gonzalo. And I think uh, uh, you've been spot on And your last point around what happens when international payments uh, are large. Uh, that is where I think this group's interest also lies. We've been interacting with the central bank uh, on this subject as well. And uh, the, the, the head of SME finance department has taken keen interest and we will sort of bring him into the discussion as well uh, on this subject. But I think uh, uh, before that, uh, uh, Asfandia Paroksa wanted to come in uh, on uh, the, the, the taxation side. He had a quick point to make. Asfandia, sir, please. Thank you. Uh, actually, I would like to uh, uh, just add on to a couple of points that the uh, fellow uh, participants uh, uh, mentioned, but from a private sector standpoint. Hello. Uh, I think, uh, yes, hello, can, can, I, am I, uh, can I be heard? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was, uh, which one, just wanted to uh, mention that I think uh, a lot of the time uh, the, the, there's too much emphasis on and uh, documentation being the objective. Uh, of the taxation measures or of, of, the, of the being the real challenge. But I think from a, a, a e-commerce perspective, we need to really be focusing on the growth of e-commerce and the economy and economic growth uh, enabled by digitization. And when you go through uh, do the digitize, digitization, uh, 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 documentation is, is a byproduct of digitization, as, as we can see, which, we, which in a way we talk about, uh, uh, be it plastic money or other other means it's not just uh, i think plastic money there are a lot of other uh, payment uh, options which are uh, coming to digitization but i think uh, there's too much focus on documentation uh, within the uh, 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 government and the objectives but i think that that is, should be a, the bright product rather than the objective number one number two i think uh, 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 cash i mean uh, you were having a discussion amongst us uh, some e-commerce uh, players and uh, it's very important to know the cash is not scalable Cash is, I mean, any business that is working on cash is, uh, especially in the e-commerce space, is not scalable. And that's why digitization is with, and, and digital payments. And that's why that's very important. And that's why taxation comes into play because a lot of people find it very tough and, and are fearful of documentation and taxation, actually, not documentation so much, but the tax authorities, the tax rates and the tax incidents uh, within the entire value chain, as uh, Badr and a few other people mentioned. Uh, uh, Secondly, I would like to uh, uh, also point out that, um, I, I mean, from a documentation standpoint, there was some talk about pause, uh, uh, point of sale integration and systems. These are all very cumbersome and they're not adequately incentivized and other issues related to that. But I think the crux of it is, as, as uh, just my, my uh, last final thoughts would be that the crux of it is, as Amir Saab and uh, Mr. Gonzalo had mentioned, that access to the internet is critical here. And, and I'll give you an example that if, some, if somebody has uh, um, a broadband connection, for example, personally speaking, from a business or from an individual standpoint, we we are paying about 34% on top of the uh, uh, internet charges themselves in terms of advanced income tax, services taxes, and this varies across uh, the country, but it's by and large similar in terms of the incidence of taxation on internet access itself. And of course, telecommunication and mobile data and all those related issues, but I'm talking about broadband uh, connections. So this is a very critical aspect when it comes to taxation. And because uh, uh, within the, I mean, this is the internet service charges taxation on top of that built to the consumer, but I'm sure within the value chain, you also have high taxes that are, that are being incurred uh, there as well. So I think access to internet is a critical, uh, uh, is the foundation as was being spoken about for a growth in e-commerce and facilitation of the same. I just wanted to uh, uh, mention these points. Thank you. Well, thank you, Asmundi Arsab. So I, I, I need to go back to uh, Ms. Aisha Moriani and uh, then, of course, Ms. Husnbano Barki. But before that, you know, uh, I, would, I would really appreciate 
if there are any uh, other thoughts before I go back to uh, uh, Miss Aisha, because I, I, I would like to sort of bring her uh, at the end so that she can not only sort of uh, uh, give us uh, the, the, the way forward, but also let us know if there's any homework uh, on our side. So before I give it to, uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, Aisha Saiba, so I see Kashif and Nagisa wants to say something and then I'll come back to the Shansa. Uh, but 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 we have to make it quick because we just have a couple of minutes left. So Kashif sir, please. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Uka, for this opportunity to talk. Um, uh, well, very good points made. Quite a lot of points made with respect to taxation and quite a lot of learning also. Uh, having been associated with micro SMEs and having seen this uh, e-commerce uh, arena develop in Pakistan very closely. Uh, I would like to say that there are startups, of course, uh, in Pakistan, but a lot of things, uh, e-commerce activity is happening, uh, which is not documented. Uh, people are selling through their own Facebook pages. They are selling through WhatsApp. Um, again, uh, for these people to come into the tax net, um, because tax has to be accommodated from the cost of production, you know, so it adds on to the price. Uh, and because this major chunk of e-commerce e activity happening, um, uh, undocumented uh, startups which are coming up, of course, like Green, Ride Hailing, um, they, they are all documented, but a big chunk is happening uh, undocumented. So the idea is to bring them into TaxNet, and it would be very interesting to see what kind of solutions we can bring forward to bring these uh, undocumented micro SMEs operating through Facebook, WhatsApp into the TaxNet. Uh, and it would be very interesting to know what can we do about it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Kash sir. Ji, the chance, sir. Ji, thank you, Vakka. So uh, uh, I just wanted to, you know, pick on uh, yeah, Brother's point about the compliance for startups. Uh, one of the things, you know, that I, that, that I want to highlight for the for the policymakers over here is that, you know. Uh, Pakistan has Pakistan is part of double taxation treaty for uh, you know for, from which you know companies from United States let's say other countries you know they, they take full benefit from it uh, and for a Pakistani startup to take benefit from a double taxation treaty uh, before going into you know that international approval process they have to go through a local approval pro process through Pakistani government right, which is very inconvenient and you know adds to the time and resources for the compliance you know and it make them you know non-competitive so that's that's one point you know that i wanted to highlight another uh point from the you know uh, about the double taxation is that for many startups to make a product they probably have to avail service from you know any any non-resident uh pakistani company right which is which is probably not established over here and for they to take this service and you know then to pay pay for that service they again there's there's, there's this taxation of uh, i think i believe 15 percent that that they have to pay uh, on their service and and if and if that non-resident company is a non-filer then that becomes 30 percent right which in most cases they are non-filer and so so i think this is some these these are a couple of points that you know we, we need to look at going into the new new finance bill Thank you, Vikar. Thank you, Zishan, sir. Very, very, very important. Uh, let me now uh, turn to uh, uh, turn back to Ms. Aisha Muryani Saiba. She's been listening to us very patiently, and I think she's the, given that she's the focal person on e-commerce policy, we'd really like to hear from her, as I said, on how to uh, sort of uh, uh, take the next steps in terms of way forward. But uh, but but again, if there's any homework on our side, which we need to do, which STPI needs to do uh, as a think tank or uh, what this uh, community needs to do as a private sector sitting with you, uh, please help us understand that. Madam, please. Uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your effort in bringing all the stakeholders. I think one of the uh, very important aspect, which uh, I've taken down notes of uh, everyone's important point that uh, everybody made very important points. Uh, but uh, this value chain uh, from the taxation perspective, I think needs to be studied in greater detail. So maybe if SD uh, uh, PI can take uh, this assignment of uh, you know going through the whole value chain taxation system because this was a specific assignment given to fbr and moc by the prime minister
to work on um, tax incentives. Primarily, FBR uh, was supposed to do it, but MOC was told to work with them. So I think a good study um, of uh, all, all the taxation, uh, including you know the uh, connectivity and access issues, uh, would be very useful uh, to go to the. Uh, uh, you know, uh, FBR with the proper documentation, and uh, we are uh, doing pillar-wise uh, deep diving, as uh, Badr was saying. But at the same time, I think a good study by SDPI would be very useful. And uh, on the digital payments, we have uh, uh, in the last um, uh, NECC agreed to develop a focused uh, group, and uh, we will be proceeding on that. So digital payment, of course, is one of the priority, as Ibrahim Saab was suggesting, that pick up uh, three uh, main uh, you know, roadblocks and focus on that. So this is uh, digital payment is one area where we are very keen to work, and uh, we, we will be you know, uh, working with all the stakeholders. I don't know if anybody was here from the state bank, because a lot of work has already been done on the payments. Uh, and uh, uh, recently, all the development in the FinTech uh, side has come up because of the regulations which state bank has come up with so uh, international payment gateway um, as gonzalo was mentioning yes this is one of the area where we have also indicated in the policy but we we need to see that the kind of progress which we have already made that keeping in view uh, the progress which is already there we need to define the next step uh, and competition commission will definitely be made part of the NECC. And we really thank you for all the work that they have done. And uh, consumer protection is something which is a provincial subject in any case. Federal government cannot take over this work. Uh, and uh, consequential legislation is required. All the provinces are working on if there are any gaps. And then uh, at the federal level, we do have ICT Consumer Protection Act. And that is being updated right now. Uh, in the NECC, um, there is a commission on uh, consumer protection and they inform that the council has not yet been formulated in Islamabad. So we are uh, following up on that, that why uh, that is not happening. Um, and uh, on the uh, telecom sector, I completely agree that uh, it's uh, uh, including the infrastructure is a very important dimension of e-commerce. And access to equipment is, again, uh, um, extremely important. Uh, so we are also uh, trying to accede to information technology agreement uh, to facilitate access to IT equipment. Uh, and uh, I think uh, these were some of the main points which were raised. And uh, obviously, on taxation, we would be uh, happy to collaborate with SDPI if. Uh, uh, they are interested in doing a specific study, and we have also uh, we are in the process of establishing a project unit within the Ministry of Commerce, which will be uh, doing dedicated follow-up on this, um, so that you know uh, we can we we have a uh, one uh, project management system which is doing nothing but e-commerce. Thank you. Th th thank you, Madam. Uh, uh, I, I think this is this was very comprehensive and around your point on uh, helping with uh, better understanding of the supply chain in the sector we'll certainly stand ready to do that and also if there are legislative gaps at the provinces uh, one would of course remain ready uh, and we can of course bring back the industry players who are here with you and others who may feel important to discuss with and take those legislative gaps forward so, so maybe just to remain uh, on time, and I do understand there's very rich discussion which has gone into the chat box as well. And many of you have uh, come for the very specific advice of which we are taking note uh, for our report, which will be submitted to Ms. Uh, Aisha Moriani. Uh, but I think uh, for the summing up, uh, probably uh, I'll, I'll uh, invite uh, Ms. Husn Banu Berki, who's the chief of party at uh, Priya. Uh, I, I, I think probably uh, she'll be best placed not only to sum this up, but also to let us know how uh, Priya may be uh, supporting uh, the next steps going forward. Uh, Madam Berkey, please. Dr. Wakara, thank you. I, I, I 
doubt your statement about the weather would be best place to um, sum it up because the information has been so rich and the participants are so experienced and so so um, deeply involved in this area of the topic. What I can do is, as a, I, I still consider myself as an outsider, um, Priya facilitates um, and has been facilitating the process of e-commerce um, policy development and its implementation, but we still do not have that deep dive as you guys um, do. So, um, you know, just, just a, <laughs> a bit of humbleness from me right now. But um, my... Um, uh, I, the way I would like to sum it up is, um, you know, e-commerce um, and taxation, it, it's a very complicated uh, subject, especially when we start looking at the value chain of e-commerce, because even the definition of e-commerce uh, is not very clear. Uh, e-commerce is a you know, in a simplest form, you can say it's a mode of payment, but then it's also a business model with its own supply chain um, uh, mechanism and ancillary services that go along with it. Um, but then the uh, what resonated with me uh, and in this discussion has been that um, taxation and your fiscal policy is a tool towards a goal. And what's really important is for us to um, acknowledge what our primary goal is at this stage of um, developing an enabling environment for uh, e-commerce and uh, um, where we are right now in terms of e-commerce are we don't our infrastructure not not necessarily the physical infrastructure but just really our base on which we can develop an e-commerce market is narrow and it's narrow because um we don't we have low penetration in uh in terms of digital payments we have low penetration in terms of internet accessibility we have low uh penetration in terms of uh um financial access um and then we don't have that supporting regulatory framework of consumer protection and data protection and so for me as an as uh, someone who's worked generally on uh, on policy levels and market development, I would say that these are, you know, of the nine pillars, these are really the basics. So if you are to use your fiscal policy and taxation, um, then you cannot just necessarily just look at e-commerce business and e-commerce value chain, but you need to also look at how the fiscal policy uh, can be used to expand your base. So of course, then you look at your taxation as a tool to incentivize internet access to remote areas where it's not necessarily feasible for uh, many telecom companies to do that. What can the government do there? Um, digital payments, you know, our credit card um, access is very low. Bank policies themselves do not, they restrict their own market segment for several reasons. Um, you know, how do we um, expand through our fiscal policies, um, including taxation, um, the base for digital payments versus cash payments. And um, and of course, uh, we, we need to work on the regulatory side as well. So uh, that's really my take, uh, my understanding. Uh, that's my understanding of what, you know, needs to be um, focused on. Um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, you guys having worked in very specific areas of e-commerce, there are priorities for you too. But um, what I believe is that unless, unless your market uh, offers a scale, uh, it's very difficult to attract feasible business models, whether it's with regards to e-payment gateways, whether it's regard to attracting big international players like Amazon into your market or making Pakistan attractive to them. Um, so, so focus needs to be to make us ready to scale up and to develop scale. I mean, that's my take, but um, I, I'm, I look forward to continuing this discussion. Uh, this discussion needs to be continued. Um, you know, just understanding how complex it is uh, in terms of provincial taxation and federal taxation and um, you know where one has the leverage to play around uh, which authority has the leverage to play around is very complicated and we all need to figure that out and we hope that as Priya as a project that 
um, is going to be on ground for at least another two years. We look forward to now working on these smaller areas with, uh, of course, Ministry of Commerce and other regulators, but um, also the various components of e-commerce. So I look, I look forward uh, for our project to be working um, with you subsequently. And um, that's really it. And thank you so much for your time for participating. Thank sorry, you so much. Sir. I just wanted you, to you, add uh, one thing. Sorry. Um, so let I just wanted to quickly uh, on behalf of Pasha wanted to really appreciate just not be Husubanune, she just mentioned and I'm Gonzalez. I'm really sorry. I initially uh, uh, make sure that I was speaking in English. So apologies for that. Uh, but uh, just wanted to appreciate Priya's role, uh, Chain Store Association of Pakistan's role, Asmundar has been is here, Osmanu is here, uh, Fasi is here. Um, um, Ministry of Commerce, of course, has been the lead focal uh, agency you know, who, has, who has really taken lead on that and has been consistent. So just FYI, right now, I believe there is the, the domestic e-commerce market, if we extrapolate all the state bank data, is around a billion dollars which is just less than 1% of our total retail business in Pakistan. So it's just a tip of the iceberg, as Hussain Banu just said. We're just starting it off, and we're trying to even figure out how to move forward faster. So just wanted to even appreciate STPI's roles in organizing this. I think these are, all these such initiatives will not only help us streamline better and improve and focus on uh, important things but will also create awareness amongst the general public smes and everyone who, who can be part of the value chain in some form and then of course there are tons of things from rural to urban urban to cross border and and, and services products so many things to be discussed uh, within the scope of e-commerce so but i really wanted to appreciate all the stakeholders who have taken initiatives in different ways to uh, work on e-commerce because I think this is the best way we can contribute back and fast track our economic progress, uh, probably just the fastest possible way with the least capital expenditure and uh, most engaging employment creation and entrepreneurship creation opportunity as well for the country. Okay, thank you, Badar Saab, and thank you, uh, Ms. Susan Banabarki, for your uh, closing remarks. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, in, in fact, I, I, I feel sorry that we'll have to end the discussion here because I see very rich discussion going on in the chat box, something which we're going to capture uh, in our report. Uh, that's one. Second, of course, in case there are afterthoughts, please do post, uh, you know, do, do post any afterthoughts to us over email or STPI has a dedicated web page on the subject uh, where you can post and, and Basif can guide you to that. And I think, uh, as, as Ms. Uh, Aisha Moriani said, we will uh, look into, we we'll look forward to the next steps around the working of uh, e-commerce council, as well as any other um, uh, initiatives on the nine pillars uh, of the policy uh, and how this, this uh, community can add uh, going forward. So I think uh, uh, my last request to all of you would be that STPI would aim to come back with a report around this discussion in about two weeks time to all of you. And if you can sort of uh, 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 give your inputs on priority on that report, uh, we'll be able to submit it back to uh, the Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Finance and FDR, as well as the provincial revenue authorities who have kindly joined us over here today. Uh, so on behalf of uh, STPI, I would uh, really thank all of you for your presence, your time which you have given today uh, and we look forward to taking uh, this forward with you uh, in the coming meetings. Thank you very much once again.